Hello? Oh. Rick. Hey. Gotti Jr., Radio Impound Podcast. What's up, buddy? Nothing. How you doing? Good, good. I got Jason Rona here with me. Hey, what's Jason? up, Rick? What's happening? Just same old, same old. Are you uh, I... ranking RC drivers right now? <laughs> Not at the moment. There haven't been any races. Yeah, right. slow weekend. Now, at first when I saw this, I was, uh, I think we even talked about it on the show, Jason. Uh, I was like a little critical of it because at first I didn't understand how he was getting the, uh, how you were getting the rankings actually. So, you know, at first I was just looking at it and saying, what, Mayfield's down there? What the heck? You know what I mean? Like, I didn't oh, yeah, understand. Sure. I think as yeah. I, uh, as you called me out on it and then I looked into it further, you know, uh, of course me, I, I react <laughs> uh, without without even doing any research that's how i do things around here right jason right yeah so yeah you know i think though i i, I apologize for overreacting and oh no no being the you know, I, I, am, know what i mean any ranking you know any it, it ranking is yeah. always you know up for interpretation you know i mean nobody's gonna agree all the time and i'm cool with that i mean i don't even agree with sometimes when when I see the results and then, you know, how everyone turns out in the rankings and then I go back and look at the actual results and usually, well, 99% of the time it makes sense when you really look into it. But, you know, college football, any ranking is always oh up God. for a debate. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, right. I hate rankings, to be honest with you. Like, they do that in the NBA and it's just like, that's such a joke. Yeah. Everybody played in different eras and stuff and you can't. You know, I mean, Michael yeah. Jordan, the best player of all time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I got to say, I, you know, I'm with Jason on this one. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, it was great having you on the show, Rick. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, thanks for all that info. Yeah, yeah. Well, go back, uh, Rick, and <clears throat> tell everybody a little bit who you are. And, I mean, you've obviously been involved in RC, but um, – Talk a little bit about, you know, what you've done in RC and your own racing a little bit, I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess I've been racing for, gosh, I've been racing for close to 15 years now, unfortunately. And then, <laughs> uh -huh. um, and then I was, uh, so I was back in the good old days, I guess some people would call it, but, um, Throughout driving, I was decent. I'm up in the Pacific Northwest. I was a decent driver, and I was able to get sponsored by Jammer Products back in the day, and mm -hmm. uh, in their in their heyday. And and uh, you know, I was I'm not a I was never a top tier driver by any means, but you know, I could hold my own in my area, and I guess I was a start. I guess of you know this the new trend of so many people getting sponsored, you know, the support drivers in different areas and things like that. I guess I was mm -hmm. kind of one of the first of, of that, which I don't always agree with, but you know, whatever, that's a different mm -hmm. debate. And then, uh, and yeah. then from there throughout my racing, I traveled to the, you know, the national races and whatnot. And me and a group of two other guys, Gary guest and, and a guy called, uh, Matt Fanna, the Matty Matt show, we called him. He, yep. you know, we decided, like most people in RC, that, you know, oh, RC's got to go big time and, and this and that. And with those two people, we put on the Manufacturer's Cup in, I think it was 2005 was maybe the first year, or 2005, okay. 2006, something like that. And I think you were there, right, Jason? I, I've never, I, I never went to the race, but I, I, I did, I did you know, pay attention oh, okay. to what was going on. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't remember if you actually made it or not. But yeah, the Manufacturers Cup was um kind of a a, a cool thing. It we put on a race specifically um for spectators. So it's not like anything that's you know, your traditional race. We put it on more like a motocross event. We changed the format so it was shorter so someone who doesn't know anything about R C can understand it. Um, and it worked out really well. We, there was like four, four to 5,000 people there. The, we held it in a, uh, uh, like a horse arena 
and uh, you know we packed it, which was cool. We had a beer garden, the whole deal. And then for we gave another one, another thing we wanted to do with that was give away actual prizes versus you know just a bowling trophy or you know whatever whatever it was. So we ended up giving a full size um, dirt bike to the winner of Buggy, and then the winner of Truggy got. Uh, the first year, I think it was like a set of wheels for their car. And then the second year, it was uh, a quad, a full-size mm-hmm. quad. And then um, and then the sportsman driver, which was a big deal at the time, because, again, it was back when before so many people were sponsored, and it was actually really difficult to get a sponsorship. The winner in the sportsman class got a full uh, – got a, got a sponsorship. It wasn't a full sponsorship, but – still hard to get at the time nonetheless uh they got a sponsorship from whatever car they drove which was kind of which was really cool for the sponsorship guys because you know that was back then it was really really hard to get so we did that and then that we stopped doing that in 2006 and then i'd just been racing and and stuff like that and then and then basically kind of started on the the top 25 ranking thing uh never intending to show it to anybody really just for my own for my own interest and probably 2012 i think is probably when i started collecting you know data and stuff like that and then in 2014 i decided it was interesting enough that maybe other people would want to see it and so i made a little website and released it out there for the world and you know kind of you know taking a step back for a second, just to your, uh, you know, to the event you were talking about, it was called it was called the Manufacturer Shootout, right? No, ma- Manufacturer's no, Cup. Man- yeah. Manufacturer's Cup. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. several years later, there was became the the Alabama race, which kind of um, it kind of piggybacked the name a little bit, but yeah, um, yeah. Because I think they're just called the Manufacturer Shootout. I think AMS. Yeah, um, so, yeah, I think you're right. And then you guys had the the um, manufacturers cup, but I mean, I know, you know, based off of what you guys were doing there, I know that those guys is probably some of the hardest that those guys were racing because the prizes you guys were giving away there uh, were just awesome. And yeah, it was it was a big deal. I mean, not a lot of people. Well, even still today, nobody's giving really purse money, you know. Back then, there was the Nitro Cross, you know, the Nitro Pit had a race where they gave money as well. And, uh, but yeah, it was, you know, it's kind of a unique thing, I guess, in RC. Yeah, I mean, I remember uh, between Tebow and Mayfield and and those guys just uh, duking it out because, you know, I know Mayfield, I think, wanted the quad and the wheels or I forget what yeah. he actually won both. Yeah, he did win both. And then Tebow won the bike, right? Yeah, Tebow won the bike. I think it was the second year. And um, I can't remember. Somebody was leading. I remember who was leading the first year. And then Quartz had it until the last lap, and Truy got him. And so Truy got the bike the first year. Okay. Which I think he may still have that bike. I've heard. Really? Yeah. And did did you guys get those donated, or how did the prizes actually work? What we did um, is we went for it. You know what I mean? So we yeah. uh, contacted all. We got a lot of outside support from local businesses and stuff, and we got those from a local company. And we didn't get them donated for free. We paid, but we paid like the dealer cost, I guess. So we got them at a pretty heavy discount, but it, you know, it was, it was still steep, but to us, it was important because we wanted, you know, we're up here in the Northwest. It's harder to get guys up here, but the factory guys and without the factory guys, you know, we wouldn't put on the best of what RC had to offer for the crowd. And also Mm -hmm. we figured um, it's more tangible, I guess. And, a little more exciting for the crowd if they know they're racing for something real. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that was all, that was a, I mean, a major component as far as we were concerned. Yeah, it was really important. 
you know, that was kind of part of it, right? Yeah. So, and then uh, talk about the trophies a little bit. I remember the trophies being like super kind of unique. Yeah, again, you know, we wanted to do something where, where at the time, again, it was mainly, you know, just your bowling trophies, like a big bowling trophy or whatever. We wanted to do something different and something that, you know, if someone put it on a trophy, I mean, on a, you know, a trophy cabinet or a shelf at one of these guys' house, we wanted it to stand out. So we got these big, um, uh, pistons and I think they were out of like a train. They're big. And, uh, they're probably six inches in diameter. And so we had those done and then we wanted to get a little, again, of the Northwest feel into it. So we had a guy, a local guy, um, cut some bases out of like a tree stump. Um, so they were like real, I don't know what kind of tree it was, but so, and, uh, so basically had a big wood base. They were heavy. The poor guys, one had to lift them up, and they blow some shoulders out. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I remember the. Um, I'm just kind of collecting a few photos uh, for Gotti here at the same time because he'll post them up. But yeah, I mean, you guys had like, a, I mean, it was definitely one of a kind, and I remember the guys really, really, um, just you know. We're so excited about being a part of that that event. Yeah, you know, I think I think I had a good impact on you know our scene in general, and you know, I think our hopes were, you know, our I guess our hopes going in was to prove that it could be done. You know, it's like RC is not really tailored the way it is for a spectator that doesn't know what's going on. Even people that mm-hmm. race get lost in in the mains. And we wanted to prove that, you know, we could get a crowd there and they would enjoy it. And they were, I mean, it was crazy. They, they were going nuts, especially for the monster yeah. trucks, surprisingly. But, yeah, they were, yeah. Um, you know, they dug it. It was entertainment. They were there for three, like around three hours probably. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was really the, cool. the key with that whole, go ahead. Oh, I was I was going to say, uh, you know, it was really cool. And, and what we tried to do again, because the whole goal was to make it as exciting as we could for the crowd. So that's, again, we sugared the uh, the surface and the traction was insane. I mean, and this is before people were sugaring too. Um, and it was ridiculous. But we wanted the cars as fast as they could be. So when someone doesn't know anything about RC, they're not going to think about, their radio shack, you know, walk behind it with a cord deal. We wanted to, you know, show these are race cars. Yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> you, you ran that event, was it two or three times? Just two times. Okay. Uh, has there ever been any, I mean, I'm sure there's talk every year, but any idea about trying to do it again or? Yeah, you know, what... It's. I'm not saying we're doing it again, for sure, but it's definitely we're taking the steps, I guess, behind the scenes, um, to possibly do it next year. But we'll. That's to be determined. Um, mm-hmm. We need a lot of things because it's more expensive than a normal event event to put on, and uh, of course, be, you know so. You know, it's it's in the works whether it actually happens or not. That's uh, yet to be determined, but it's it's looking really good. And you know, we have a couple ideas again that that I think are are unique and going to make it you know better for the racers and and better for the crowd. So, and and hopefully it'll be easier this time around if we do it because. You know, social media is so much bigger now. I mean, you know, we didn't have really Facebook, and none of that stuff really existed then, which is unfortunate because there's not a lot of coverage of that event. Yeah. Picture-wise yeah. and video-wise. Um, so that's a kind of unfortunate. But this day and age, I think it would be a lot easier to probably pull off, surprisingly. It would be um, – I, I, yeah, I think this – it's probably – 
maybe more suited to this time frame era than even when you when you did it before. Oh, for sure, for sure. Especially with so, like yeah, e-buggies and stuff. Yeah, I mean this, I, you know, everything's kind of matured so much more. Uh, you know, even you know the cars, the tires are more suited. You know, we have tires more suited to that surface. We have, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's really a lot to it. Um, and, yeah, you know, like you said, e-buggies and and then you know live RC and and uh, social media, which will be huge for that type of thing. And and uh, yeah, I remember I remember May- Mayfield telling me about that event that you know that you know, Gary would run out there and just start yelling to the crowd. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, he just, you know, you guys are like, I forget if you were throwing stuff into the crowd and they were like winning things. And, um, yeah. We gave away a bunch of stuff with, uh, with tickets that they got when that, cause we um, actually had printed tickets that we gave out to radio stations and that they gave to a bunch of people. And so we used those as the raffle tickets and we raffled off just a bunch of the stuff that, you know, normally would go to racers, but we asked the manufacturers to give us, you know, uh, little RTR stuff or, you know, something that someone doesn't know anything about RC they could actually use, you know, not like a glow plug wrench or something, but yeah, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was cool. You know, I, I remember I went up into the stands one time, because there was a bunch of people complaining because there's a bunch of people standing on the rail. So I had to go up there and tell the people to like find a seat. And they're like, <laughs> I even never forget the guy turned around. And he goes, there's nowhere to sit. And then I looked around and he was right. It was like literally packed. We were, it was pretty impressive. Yeah. So then kind of jumping, jumping back into the, um, you know, the top 25 stuff, um, you know, without getting too, too nuts in general how does it work (laughs) yeah right yeah i could go for a while on that but basically what it does basically what it is is it takes any driver it takes their average in a triplet form it's a, a driver's average finishing position of all the qualifying races he attends over a two year rolling period. Um, and with that said, a driver's most recent results are weighted heavier than their past results. So a win today isn't this, isn't worth the same as a win a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And in its simplest form, that's the way it is. The number you see on the rankings is, is uh basically represents that average it's just done in a reverse deal so that you know the higher number is better than the lower number and it eliminates a lot of decimal points that's why i did that <clears throat> well yeah i mean i think the thing so basically what you're saying is you and you have to weight races that are current uh more than some in the past so people have a chance to move into the rankings right yeah, exactly. Otherwise, it takes so long for someone to get in there. And, you know, part of RC is, I mean, unfortunately, there's mechanical failures or there's, you know, a breakage that could be caused by somebody else or a or Marshall flaming you out. There's outside factors, which, I mean, there's outside factors in any, any form of racing. But without those races dropping in value slightly, uh, you know, I'll use the example of like Dakota Fend one year at the Nationals was, in my opinion, the clear, the clearly the fastest guy there. Can't remember what year it was. The in, it was where it was covered, and uh, Dakota Fend TU'd I think all, every every round, and was leading his semi and then blew a servo, so he really ended up getting like 30th that event because mm-hmm. the way the semis work, there's 15 and 15, and so that thing would stay with him for a full two years, which to me is not realistic and yeah, doesn't give you a true representation of who's really the best. Yeah. I mean, basically he got in a situation where he had to bump up out of the semis, which that could, the same thing could happen this year um, or yeah, any other yeah. year. 
so it's the fact that a guy TQs like he did there, um, and then all of a sudden he breaks a serve hoe in the semi, and he's he's at the back of the semi listing. Now instead of getting you know uh, a decent A main result or possibly winning, now he's not even close. Yeah, and that and that hurts you big time. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, you know, to me, uh, you know, there was some debate, you know, recently. I, I don't know. Do you want to? Do you need to explain some more about how it works before? We um, no, I mean that's pretty much it. But I mean that's basically in its simplest form how it works. Um, I mean mm-hmm. mathematically, it's a lot more complicated. You know, to factor mm-hmm. in, you know, the 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 decreasing value of races, and I guess I could touch on a little bit on what makes a qualifying race, what mm-hmm. makes a race qualify, and I set it up. It's based basically off of professional golf because, in my opinion, it's the closest sport, surprisingly, to RC, in the fact that there's drivers in. RC world, there's drivers all over the world, and in a very rare, you know, it's very rare that all those drivers end up at the same event, so you can't really do a series because it's just not feasible across the globe to do that. Um, Yeah. So, you know, what golf does is it values events based on who shows up, which is exactly how this is set up. And so any race, anywhere, anytime, uh, that any race could count. It's all depending on who shows up to race that event, that race. Um, so technically, you know, uh, come world's time or whatever, some if they hold some club race at, uh, you know, RC Tracks of Vegas, there's enough people there that the math ends up working out. That, you know, it's a strong enough field and it could count. You know, JBRs, yeah. JBRLs could count. It, the name of the event is really irrelevant. It's all about mm-hmm. who attends. And that's yeah. based off of that number that you see on the on the left-hand side of the rankings, you know, the 140 point whatever. What you do is every driver's all the way down to whatever, 3,000 drivers or however many are inputted in my thing there. Every driver that attends, you add up all those numbers. And if it hits a, you know, X number, then it's a qualifying event. Usually it takes... Um, you know, usually it takes like six people within the top 25, six or seven to be a qualifying event, to be a rough estimate. But if you get enough of those, like, you know, 25 through 40 drivers, you know, that can bump you into the, being a qualifying event too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of times people, they get a little bit confused and they think about the names of these events and they want to classify it by the name of the event being more luxurious than another. And yeah. to me, like, like like you said earlier, it's the competition is what's weighing it, not the name of the race. So it's like, like you said, there could be a JBRL before the world, but if everybody shows up, it's going to count towards your ranking because you're racing all the best guys. Yeah. And you should get rewarded if you beat those guys at that event, yeah. mm-hmm. regardless of the name, you know. And, you know, I like you mentioned previously, or you were alluding to, was there was a lot of uh, discussion or drama or whatever you want to call it online about counting the warm-up races. And, you know, my theory with that was I don't care what it's called. Those, there was like 20 of the 25, top 25 drivers were there. And, mm-hmm. you know, call it a warm-up, call it what you want. You know, I've, I've spoke with a lot of uh, a lot of those guys on the top 25 list at, previous to that event at other warm-up events. And, you know, they were in agreement that it should count because come mm-hmm. the main time, those guys are trying to win, period. Yeah. And that's how I believe it would be. I mean, I've never been on that level and probably never will be, but – that's the way I would approach it if I was there. I'd want to show my competition that I'm here to win. Yeah. Well, and at the very minimum, you know, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care who you are. Um, at the very minimum, you, you should be competitive. You should be close. 
Now, yeah. granted, you know, all all these guys can say, okay, I was testing or I was doing this or that. You know what? Everybody's testing, right? Yeah. And and at the end of the day, you still should be. If you're an A main driver, you should probably be in the A main. If you're not, then you're having a bad weekend, right? Yeah. And 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 the other thing is too is like, you know, if those people, any event could you could make the same argument for. You could make the same argument that Silver State could have been a warm up for some of those European drivers that probably aren't going to get over here. Or right. You know, or you could make the same argument that at Nitro Challenge, say you come out with a new tire, Jason, and Mayfield runs it in the main, but he's not really sure how it's going to work. You're taking just as much of a gamble and some, to some extent. You know, you're yeah. trying stuff in mains that you've never tried. And yeah, you could say, well, we lost, but we were testing. <laughs> yeah, well, we tested a new tire that we were doing, and it didn't work. Well, yeah. you can make that argument at any event. It's like, well, hey, uh, nice job. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I totally get it, you know, and I, I really like – I really like the the idea of the whole thing. <clears throat> and like you said it's never going to be perfect, but honestly like um you know but maybe you mentioned or whatever, but when you look at the names on the list you're kind of like this looks about right to me. <laughs> you know, it's like it's not like it's not like I'm looking at the names going, "Oh, this guy, you know." <laughs> this yeah. doesn't make any or, like, or look, some guy's it, missing completely. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, so, you know, so to me, when I look at it, I'm like, you know, this looks pretty accurate. You know, you got Tessman, Mayfield, Cavallari, Tebow, David Ronafalk. I mean, it's like, give me a break. I mean, those are probably the, the best guys, right? It's like, Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if I was to pick a guy to win a race, any race, I'd probably pick of one of those six guys. Realistic. Yeah. Mhm. And and I think the thing is is you know I've even talked to Mayfield a little bit about this and um and you know and on the the little bit of drama we talked about that was online about it. Um, mm-hmm. um they had mentioned that there's some RC manufacturers that are starting to look at this list and you know they they might be making decisions based off of that at some point. Mm. Yeah, and 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 to me that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and and it may not be a good thing for everyone, but I guess going back uh, to when I started this, the whole reason I even started this, what sparked my curiosity, is I was I'm, I am and was. Uh, good friends with Taylor Peterson, who I would say would be in his prime. He doesn't race anymore or hardly. And in his prime, probably 2014-ish, you know, 2013-14, he was, he made all the mains, um, you know, he made the main at the Worlds and all that. But it was funny. He used to always tell me, he'd be like, I made the main at Metro Challenge and I get so many people coming up to me saying, oh, how pumped and how pumped I should be for making the main. And I keep telling them, I make the main every time. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, RC people, they uh, they remember who wins, period. Not who yeah. got second, not who gets third. And I think that the list was really, when I did it, it was designed for people like Taylor. And another great example, who's not doing so well in the rankings right now, but he is Josh Wheeler. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people wouldn't consider him, wouldn't have considered him as a top ten driver in the world. But if you look at his results, he was always finishing fifth or sixth. He never won, yeah. but finishing yeah. fifth or sixth at these events is a big deal. Yeah, he's he's better than people give him credit for. Is essentially yeah, yeah. It's like hey, Taylor Peterson. You know, it's like hey, he might not be. Ryan Ryan Tebow or Ty Tessman, but look, this guy was making the mains and and uh, he's consistently a factor out there. Yeah, exactly. And you know, he may not he may not be challenging for wins very often, but that doesn't discredit his results of where he is. 
And another another yeah. good example actually would be Cody King. He was inside the top four and five for a long time, and a lot of people were surprised by that. And if you take away Cody's um, Cody's uh, you know world world's win in 2012 or whenever it was, I think it was 2012. Uh, if you take that away, he doesn't have a lot of big wins. But if you look at his results again, he places third more than anyone, I swear. Like, so yeah. many times is he, like, in that third or fourth spot. And people are wondering how he's ahead of, um, you know, in the past, he was ahead of, like, Mayfield and Cavalier and those guys. And they couldn't, people couldn't figure out why. And, you know, Mayfield and Cav would have those wins, but then they would also have those you know, the breakages or something like that. So, you know, based on an average, Cody was really consistent, more so than probably anyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, that people have. Yeah, finish your race. He, yeah, right. uh, yeah, exactly. And a lot, of, a lot of arguments people have are, you know, hey, how come this person's not there? Or how's that person that high? And people don't actually go look at the results. If you go look at, like, if you looked at this person's results, at any person on here over the last year even, you'd be like, holy crap, dude, this guy got, like, third, fourth all the time. No wonder he's up there. Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. think RC's kind of been bred to be whoever won the last race is the greatest greatest driver in the world. You know, that's just kind yeah. of how it's yeah. been. Yeah, I mean, to me, um, and I'm always looking at, I always think about things in terms of, you know, before this the list existed and things like that, I was, I always thought to myself, you know, that was kind of like what I had going in my head was, look, you know, you have to give credit to these guys that are consistently getting it done. You know, it's not like, oh, who's that hot guy that just won that one race? You know, it's just more like, hey, you know, you know, this um, you can have your day, but it's like on the on the overall here, who's actually the guys that are consistently right at the top? And to me, those are the ones that that are the most valuable. Yeah, and I think that you know, I agree completely. And and my hopes with the list was it would shed light on those drivers. It really wasn't for the top three positions because I think everyone has their top three and everyone's probably in agreement for the most part within the top three, four or five guys, you know, it was mainly for those guys below that, that don't get the credit they deserve. Yeah. I mean, basically the, the situation, uh, you know, you could essentially paint for somebody is like, say you are a manufacturer, right? Like a, like me or whatever. And you're just thinking to yourself, man, you know, like I, obviously, in order to 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 be a really good, uh, you know, have a nice company or have good results, you have to have these drivers. But it's like, hey, maybe you're, you know, maybe you're missing out on a um, a Taylor Peterson, or you're missing out on a Josh Wheeler that's always doing well, but they're really not getting credit for it because you're always just looking, you're just looking for whoever the hot winner is at the time yeah and and and, you know and at the same time to piggyback on that same kind of same kind of thinking is those drivers um you know the drivers in those positions they're making the mains but they are trying to fight their way to be one of these top tier drivers um they may have to sacrifice some of their equipment to get to these races and things like that. And, you know, no disrespect to X-Ray at all, because I think they have a good car, but I'm just going to use Wheeler as an example. You know, say he's getting those fourth, fifth, you know, sixth at all these events, you know, maybe if he had a better car or a different brand car that fits him better, you know, maybe he could be fighting for those wins or, Maybe he's right. running a tire because that's what he can get. And, you know, rarely does that happen, but it's possible, you know, that this could shed light to someone who's like, man, this guy could be a contender. If we got, if he got the right stuff, he may be able to fight mm-hmm. the win. Yeah. If, um, 
you know, so to kind of go back a little bit, I was talking when I was talking to Mayfield, um, you know, because he's not really like a big, he's not the biggest social media internet guy out there. And, right. you know, a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that's out there is, you know, he doesn't really pay attention to a lot of it. But I was telling him about this list and telling him about different things. And, and I was like, look, I'm like, you got to kind of think about if one day, um, say there's somebody at, you know, Horizon or TLR or any of these companies and they say, and, you know, say it's a, a, some, you know, say, you know, because those places are so corporate, it's not like they're at all these races. And Mm -hmm. so they go into the office and say, Hey, you know, um, you know, we got this race team. How are we doing? You know, we have these guys that we pay to race and we got, you know, how are I, how do our guys rank compared to who else is out there? And, you know, of course, if you're, uh, and, you know, a nerd in the industry, you know, you know, everything that's going on about every race, but if you're a, a corporate guy, that's, you know, you're, you're watching a different end of it and somebody presents this list to you and say, all right, well, we got the guy that's number two. We got the guy that's number four. And, the, and the, then all of a sudden the guy's like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense to me, you know? And um, yeah. it kind of like, it's a quick way for people to justify who they have and, um, and the job that they're getting done. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really good point. And on the, and, and right around the same lines, I was talking to Gary Guest actually and he was saying, you know, he was reflecting back on his old racing days because he was, you know, one of those guys that would make the main and, and kind of be in that, that the lower end of the main events. And, you know, he's kind of coming back to RC a little bit, you know, doing some announcing and stuff like that. And, you know, there's a lot of people that don't maybe know who he is and stuff like that. And he said, you know, if this list was around when I was racing, um, you know, I could say, hey, you know, at one point, you know, I was the 15th ranked driver in the world versus, mm-hmm. you know, versus using the Manufacturer's Cup again, who hasn't, hasn't happened in a while, being, you know, oh, I won the Manufacturer's Cup. They could be, you know, someone today, you know, some of these younger guys, they'd be like, well, what's that? Who cares? You know, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, and, yeah nobody knows. Yeah, and same thing for like, like you were saying with the corporate guy, but, you know, I would imagine they would know what a nitro challenge is or something like that, but they may not. They don't know the gravity of a race like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and then to further the, the point, like I was trying to make when I was talking to some people, I'm like, what this does is it also shows you how important it is to finish these races. You know, it's like, it's like we talked about Dakota earlier having a bad, um, semi-final that time which wasn't his problem but um in in these situations that uh you know i always say when we go to the world it's like look let's make the main but you know let's bump up from the semi let's make the main and then we'll worry about the win you know Um, yeah and at these races even the nationals this year i think is going to use a semi system so it'll be similar but, you know, it's like, let's get out of the semi and then let's get in the main and then go for the win. But it's so important to finish. And that's why Ty Tessman, besides the victories that he has, I would say he probably also finishes probably more than anybody. Oh, for sure. So it's like, yeah, not only are sure. you fighting, not only are you fighting somebody that as just as fast as you are but you know it's like this guy is more reliable on the track so now in the times when his stuff is really good and he's really fast you have to you have to fight him for speed and then the times when his stuff isn't quite as good he might outlast you so it's like then that shows you really kind of what's going on it's like look we're not losing on speed here we're losing on consistency yeah exactly exactly and rc is in a great spot where these drivers are incredible 
And that, you know, the people that are in yeah. the industry, I mean, they know, but, you know, there was a time where you could win races with, with not making mistakes or eliminating crashes. But these days, I mean, these guys drive 45 minutes and they'll make one crash. I, mean, it's <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, you know, I'm not sure how all the contingency stuff works or people's contracts and things like that. But another thing that I hope that the list does for people is those people that, you know, aren't in the hunt and the you know, in the top three fighting for a podium, you know, the, all those other drivers, what are they really racing for at that point? To them, they're trying yeah. to win. And if they're not, it's all or nothing. But hopefully, you know, this tells that guy that's, had a flame out, like, I got to get back out there and I got to lock it up to yeah. get some points, you know, like a, like a, any point series in any, uh, racing event, you know, motocross, whatever you crash, you got to get, you got to salvage the best you can. Yeah. You got to salvage what you, what you got. Yeah. That used to be, and still is kind of a problem with a few of the hero drivers that we have in our industry. You know, sometimes they're, when they're not in the hunt for the win, they just get upset and they don't want to finish. But you're like, look, you know, I know it sucks, but you kind of, you know, it sucks to drive out there in like ninth place when you were just leading. But <laughs> sometimes yeah, you got to do exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, but a seventh or a sixth is a lot better than a ninth, especially when yeah, you when know. you're talking these rankings and how close they really are. Mm-hmm. And it is very tough to do that. I mean. I mean, when I race and, you know, the, the different levels that I've raced at, I mean, it's like the time when you're TQ and you get a bad start and you're just like, I don't really want to be out here. I should be winning this race, not in last, you know? Yeah. But, and, you know, but there are the times where you just got to keep going because it's like, you know, like you said, it's like six is better than last. Yep. Exactly. I mean, I, I fight that with my personal racing. If I blow out in the beginning, then I'm out there like, whatever, dude, maybe I can quad this or you know, yeah. fast lap or something. You know, it's like this when, you know, I could get a few more positions if I just locked it up and throw. And, and, you know, just to put that in perspective too, that, you know, that points that you see on the left-hand side of the top 25 rankings there, each position is a five-point gap. So you can see how close a lot of these people really are to each other. I mean, granted, this is an average, so, but each position is a five-point difference. So a lot of these guys are really close. It's not like three spots or, you know, you know, two positions, ten points, you add that to a lot of some of these drivers' averages, you could go up a spot. Mm-hmm. So kind of jumping forward, uh, the thing that I'm like eventually really, really interested in is the possibility of, of, uh, you know, if there eventually is a 10 scale version of this and then um, like my big interest is down the road is the combining eight scale and 10 scale. Um. Because, you know, you always have your idea of, you know, who these ultimate guys are. But, and I'm pretty sure it'll kind of stack up like you think it does. But at the same time, I think to me that's the biggest interest to me would be when you have a, if there's a 10 scale version and then you have your already uh, established 8 scale version, you know, who's the, uh, and then you, you know, then you have to combine the two who's the best. Yeah, I think that that um, I think that that will be really interesting, actually, um, because like you've mentioned on the on well on the, this podcast, for instance, on some of them that have on the ones that I've listened to, you know, you mentioned a lot of times that people don't really understand how hard it is for the you know the Mayfield Cavaliers and Tebos that go out and compete at and are a major player to win any eight scale race. And then the next weekend go indoor to someone else's home track. And they're right there in the hunt again, right? 
fighting for that win. Like it's incre- That's amazing. I mean, it is. with prep and all that other stuff. I mean, a lot of people don't grasp the difficulty of that. Yeah. I mean, I've heard a couple, you know, several times going to races like this and, you know, a guy like a, um, a guy like a, you know, just say like Cody King, something like that, who is obviously a, uh, an amazing eight scale racer. He's a world champion and he's a good 10 scale racer, but never been amazing. You know, I've heard him at the Reedy race after, uh, you know, one of, uh, Mayfield's races in the Invitational, and I've heard him just go up to him and be like, dude, you're the man. Like, because he's like, you know, he's like, I got to deal with this guy in eighth scale, but in tenth scale, I watch him race, and I'm like, dude, how are you doing it? You know, like, and it's not just him, you know, you got a couple, other couple guys as well, and it's like, um, you know, like you said, how capable they are in all these different classes is just, it's nuts. Yeah, I mean it's it's phenomenal and and likewise there was some drivers that struggled to go the other direction, you know, some really good electric guys mm-hmm. that struggle in eight scale. Mm-hmm. It's just a different a different beast. But yeah, the ten scale stuff is def <coughs> excuse me, is definitely in the works. It takes a while to gather the results because um and that's the that's the difficult part. And then the other part is finding comparable events to make it a true world ranking. Like I think we, we discussed a little bit, Jason, through, um, through Facebook and stuff is to make it a true world ranking. But I think that, you know, through talking to you and stuff, there are some events that I think it would be pretty good because once it gets started, it kind of works itself out anyways. What I've noticed with this eight scale one, is, uh, you know, it works itself out because once you get it started, it dictates what events actually count on its own. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, you, you kind of get a list of drivers going, then once they all start racing each other, then things start to kind of fall into place. Exactly, exactly. And also what I'm excited about is to find out who those sleeper guys are, you know, the Josh Wheelers of the electric world. Because there's a lot of them. You yeah, know, there's a lot of those guys that can that aren't maybe getting the credit they deserve for the kind of speed they have because they're not winning the events. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that'll be really, really cool. Um, and I and I think I'm going to do. Um, I have a lot, a lot of the truggy stuff done, but again, that's a U.S. only thing, so. I'll probably release it, but it's probably going to be, you know, obviously predominantly U.S. guys. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be really fun to have that. I mean, it's, um, you know, I think it's interesting to see when the updates are made and the releases come out and, um, you know, it gives us all something to, to talk about and look at and, uh, and, you know, it gives another opportunity for the manufacturers out there and stuff to, you know, look at their guys and, and uh, kind of another way to cheer them on, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, like, you know, like I've, I've told a bunch of people too, it's like, I'm not, it, which is kind of part of the beauty of the list, I guess, is, uh, and the crappy part about it is that I'm not making any money doing it, but it's kind of good because I had, there's nobody sponsoring it. It's 100% non-biased. No one, no one has any input on the way things should be done or, you know, my guy needs to be higher than that or whatever, you know, it's. Yeah, it's, it is. Know, what no, it is nobody's right? buying their way anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Right. Nobody yet. Uh, if you'd like to contact Rick, contact him. Yeah. Top twenty-five. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the list could be yours. <laughs> Sell out. After yeah, this right. show, you'll see, after this show, you'll see my name bump ahead of ties. Oh yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, and I'm just gonna highlight all those in green for the paid paid drivers. Yeah, but the, the, <laughs> we'll just call them patrons. 
Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Patrons of the top 25. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think that's about all the questions I have. I mean, I don't know if there's anyone you want to thank out there or maybe give a shout out to your to the site and how people actually can go to either the, on Facebook or the website. Yeah, um, you know, from if there's there's a little more detail, I guess, on the internet. I mean, on the on the website there on how it works and may fill in some of the questions that people may have is if you go to the top25rc.com and uh, click on the how it works tab, there's a couple diagrams, um, sample situations that have happened that a lot of people, you know, have, you know, frequently asked questions, I guess. Um, and then if you have any additional questions, feel free to contact me um, on the contact tab there on the website. And I always do my best to explain with examples, results, whatever it takes on how or why or who or any any situation that may come up on I can, you know, give you the results of each driver and you can see for yourself how it all works out. So I'll answer any question anytime. That's yeah, pretty I much think it. There's also is on there is there there's a there's a tab that says how it works. Um, I can't yep. remember if is there frequently asked questions or is it just how it works? I can't remember. I've been there and I've read it yeah. all, but I can't remember. The the how it works is like a brief description of you know kind of the stuff we talked about today, and then there's also a frequently asked questions that that are kind of situational based. You know, like how does driver A go or driver B go ahead of driver A when driver B didn't race or you know whatever things like that cuz you know that's one thing that can happen is a driver that ranks below another driver can actually go ahead of that drive that driver even if he places behind the other guy and it can be confusing but it's the how it works really does I mean in my opinion does a good job of showing kind of some of those situations and how it can happen mathematically speaking yeah, what ends up happening is it's not – those guys aren't really competing on the track, and you said it's basically what had happened is that guy, by the finish he got, it improved his average average position, and that's why his ranking moved up, right? Right, and there's a lot of other factors happening all at the same time. For example, you know, a driver gets a result that weekend, and at the same time, one of those results moves to – his older results, so that one's valued less. And then also mm -hmm. at that same time, because of the rolling two-year period, a, ro a race that's counting towards him probably is falling off. So depending on what those three uh, three you know results are doing and what they are, you know you could technically do better and go down because you could have a win that falls off of your total. You know because of the rolling to your period, or you could have a win that was at its full 100% value that moves to your um, your older results, which drops in value so that it's not helping you as much as the, you know, fifth place that you just got. So you technically could go down. It's kind of, that's the complicated part of it that's really difficult to explain to people, but... Um, the how it works has a couple of visuals that I think make it a little easier to understand. But there's just a lot happening at each input of an event. It's it's happening. And if a guy doesn't even go to a race, he could still have a race fall off. So people can move just sitting there when they're not doing wow. anything. That's crazy. Okay. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I wish I mm. wish I had a faster way of doing it. Let me guess, you're but, single or divorced? Yeah, right. I am single, so you can send those emails as well. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, there you go. Any uh, chicks out there? Got to be hot. Yeah. Uh, send a photo. Yeah, send a photo, and Rick will judge you and decide if you're good enough. <laughs> yeah, I'll put you around. Yeah, that's he'll, rank you, he'll rank you as in the top 20. <laughs> yeah, you should see his other ranking system, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, Jason, uh, we know who to contact now when we want to put our uh, national ranking system of all That's drivers right. into effect. So. 
Oh, yeah, ranking all drivers. You guys yeah. talked about that the last show, right? It, it, we've always talked it was, about it. Yeah. I think that would be great. I just don't have the time oh, sure to you do. do it. But, yeah, I think it would be cool. And I think that, you know, you know, it's just tough. And the way RC is, is it's everything's based on one race. Your yeah. national champion is based on one event. And your world champion is based on one event, you know. Um, it's tough. That's why, yeah. you know, you got to be on your game every event you go to, I guess. Hmm. Well, check it out. Uh, what was the website again? Uh, Top25RC.com. And on yep. Facebook also. Yeah, and on Facebook, I believe it's the same. Oh, there's a link on the website, if not. Yeah. All right, well, I really appreciate you being on the show and clearing all this up for me, man. Yeah, I no thought problem. I thought it was somebody just throwing a Top 25 out there when I first saw it, and... Uh, Jason said, no, no, man, that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. So yep. I had to read it a little bit more, and I, again, apologies if I was a little harsh. Oh, no. Dude, man, I, I did I not realize so much going into this, and yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool, man, what you're doing. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, really appreciate it again, and um, we'll talk to you soon, Rick. Yeah. yeah, no no problem. If you guys like I said, if you guys have any questions or yeah. anyone has any questions, hit me on the on the uh on the website or give me a call or whatever. Glad to explain or talk. All right. Now Jason, you have his PayPal address so you can get your name up there tonight? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my okay. name should be it should slide right to the top and it will be in green. Oh that's perfect. I'll do it I'll, I'll do it all caps and bold. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. My point total will just be infinity. Yeah. I'll just put I'll just put don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, Rick. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. I enjoy yeah. the show. I listen to I listen to all of them. So. Oh God, if I, I apologize. I'm, in advance. I'm one of I'm one of the many of the listeners. <laughs> one of the, you're one of the ten listeners, right? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Got to be right, like cool. number four or something. Yeah, we're starting to find out all these guys, Jason. <laughs> all right, man. You guys have you guys have a good night. All right, you too, man. All right, you too. All right bye. See you.